Hi, and welcome back. If you're interested in lifespan and health span, the chances are you're probably eating the right type of food. But are you eating it at the right time of day? If you're not, you could be leaving yourself open to greater weight gain and also a greater risk of developing metabolic disease. Early hunter-gatherers faced long periods of fasting because their access to food relied on successful hunting, fishing, and the availability of wild plants. Over time, the development of modern agriculture and the transition to industrialized societies changed our regular eating patterns, shifting our dinner time to later in the day to accommodate our busy work schedules. But nowadays, with access to an abundance of food, we very rarely experience prolonged periods of fasting, except for weight loss or religious practices. It's now common to have four or more meals a day, with most of the calories consumed later in the day, this frequently being combined with high calorie snacking between those meals. However, research is now showing that our health is not only affected by what we eat, but also how much we eat and what time of day we eat our meals. So what does this mean for meal scheduling and can intermittent fasting actually help? Our internal body clock does far more than just control the time that we sleep. It's our internal biological timekeeper. It regulates many aspects of our physiology and our behavior. It tells us when to be awake and active during the day and rest and sleep during the night. It can also tell us the best time we need to eat. Our body is biologically prepared to receive food during the day. Food digestion, nutrient uptake and energy metabolism are optimized to occur when we're supposed to be awake, active and eating food. But working against our biological default setting by regularly eating when we're supposed to be sleeping and fasting can compromise these processes and impact our health in a negative way. Erratic eating patterns, including late night meals, have been linked to weight gain and a greater risk of metabolic disease. Shift workers, for example, and people who work evening, night or rotating shifts have a higher risk of obesity, heart disease and also diabetes. But adopting an eating pattern that aligns with circadian rhythms can reduce these terrible risks. So can unconventional eating patterns such as intermittent fasting actually help? Nutritional interventions are now starting to focus not only on what we eat, but also when we eat it. Intermittent fasting is one way to restrict the timing rather than the content of what we eat. There are several types of intermittent fasting, one of which is time-restricted eating. This means eating all of our calories in a consistent 8 to 12 or even shorter feeding window. But are these interventions backed by evidence or is it just bro science? Most of what we know today about intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating unfortunately comes just from mouse studies, which demonstrate remarkable weight loss and overall health benefits associated with these types of dietary interventions. Obviously, some aspects of mouse physiology are different to that of humans. Mice need to eat more frequently than humans, and even a short period of fasting has a more significant physiological impact on the mice. Now, one day of fasting in mice leads to a 10% loss in body weight, whereas in humans, they would need to fast for at least 14 days to achieve similar results. This makes a direct translation from mice to humans far more complicated. While health benefits of intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating have also been observed in humans, the findings in respect to weight loss are far less clear. The current data shows modest, if any, weight loss whatsoever in human participants who undergo these diet regimes when compared to calorie-restricted diets. Drawing definitive conclusions in humans may be more difficult because of the small sample size and individual differences in metabolism, as well as variations in study design, such as the different protocols with varying times and duration of food restriction, and also participants not always complying with the instructions they're given. That said, a great deal of the health benefits could just be down to people eating less calories. Most studies describing the health benefits of time-restricted eating 
all intermittent fasting also found these diets were accompanied by some type of calorie restriction in that reducing the time of access to food also leads in most cases people to actually eat less studies that controlled and then recorded the calorie intake did not detect greater benefits from intermittent fasting when compared to calorie restriction alone the weight loss and health benefits observed with intermittent fasting are likely attributed to the resultant reduction in calorie intake that said time restricted eating does offer additional benefits to humans benefits such as improved glucose metabolism and blood pressure even without differences in calorie intake these were seen when feeding was restricted to the earlier part of the day restricting food intake to the daytime for shift workers can alleviate metabolic differences caused by shift work whereas this effect was not observed when food intake was restricted to just nighttime now one idea is that consuming food earlier in the day aligns better with our circadian rhythm so it helps to synchronize our biological clock this restores the rhythm of our autonomous nervous system which regulates essential functions such as breathing and our heart rate this is to keep us physiologically tuned as was shown in the mice studies now while there's still an awful lot to learn in this particular field the evidence proposes that to maintain a healthy weight and overall well-being aim for regular nutritious whole food meals during the day and avoid late night eating and frequent snacking eat real food whether that be carnivore at one end of the spectrum or vegan at the other the best thing to do is just to avoid processed foods altogether well i hope you found that interesting or informative hopefully both if you follow the channel you know that the moment i'm practicing omad on monday wednesday and friday that's one meal a day my eating window is around 6 p.m to 8 p.m and on the days that i'm not practicing omad i'm still practicing intermittent fasting obviously i finish eating at eight o'clock the night before and i don't then eat until midday the next day and now i'm in the philippines i'm finding it easier to push that midday uh, window further back to about two or three in the afternoon which is around the time i leave to pick up the kids uh, let me know do you practice intermittent fasting if you do what's the duration and what time of day is your first meal